Welcome to Prophecy Files. We're glad that you've joined us today, and I hope that you will take time to share out this broadcast on your social media platform, because each one of these Prophecy File updates that I'm bringing to you is of great significance in the time that we're living. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been dealing from the scripture of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and the spirit of Antichrist that we are seeing invading our culture, our society, on a massive scale. I want to share some scripture with you today, as well as some articles from the headlines that are pointing toward that kind of activity and the seduction of the very spirit of Antichrist. First, from the headlines, this article from Germany, as German churches are beginning to resume their services, they have made the rule that no singing will be allowed as the coronavirus restrictions are beginning to be loosened. The article says that Germany now allows the church services to be able to resume in a limited capacity on this past Sunday uh, as we are taping this. And now uh, they are saying that the strict set of rules is prohibiting worshipers from singing in the church over fears of the corona virus being spread easily throughout the congregation. This reminded me of the passage of Scripture and the story of when Pharaoh was speaking to Moses. And the Bible says that he told Moses that you can go out, you and the children of Israel can go in the wilderness and worship if you want to, but you can't take your cattle, you can't take the livestock. Well, for them, the livestock, uh, the cattle, the lamb, the sheep, all of them were part of the worship experience of sacrifice unto God, a blood sacrifice. And Moses declared that there is no way that we're going out to worship without our sacrificial animals. That would absolutely negate the opportunity of worship. Well, as it is right here in Germany, to stop a congregation from singing praises unto God because of the fear of a coronavirus being spread is akin to what we're reading right out of the Scripture. From this article in the United States, this article reads, Nazi-like measures in Kansas City policy requires a list to be kept of people attending in person to church services. This is unbelievable. A new order in Kansas City, Missouri requires churches to record the names of congregants who are attending the in-person services. It goes on to say that the mayor has issued the 10-10-10 rule last week on the city of a soft opening of the economy, but enforces the social distancing practices meant to stop the spread of coronavirus. The rule treats churches the same as non-essential businesses, requiring lists to be kept of people who spend more than 10 minutes on certain premises. The new policy, which specifically uh, is about churches as well, in-person religious gatherings, as it reads, including weddings and funerals, may resume subject to the 10-10-10 rule or limited to 50 people outside, provided a social distancing uh, precautions are followed and event organizers maintain record of the attendees. This, ladies and gentlemen, is nothing more than what has been seen in the past, just like Nazi Germany under Hitler, keeping the list of church members so that there can be a, an enforcement upon the members? Are they going to send police officers to those members that may have gathered too close, closer than six feet? My friends, this is certainly playing into the very plan of the Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist that is in our culture today. Here's some good news for you that you haven't been hearing in the national media and international media for that matter. Israeli scientist nabs a U.S. patent for the coronavirus vaccine design. This was as of April the 21st, 2020, and the article reads, in the case of the novel coronavirus, the RBM is part of its spike protein, which in the major viral surface protein that it is used to direct how the virus engages and interacts with cells in the body and to bind to the receptors like a key, this professor who founded this, the key that has to fit into a keyhole. Now this professor has declared that he and his team who have been working on the coronavirus, listen to this, since 2004, around the same time of the SARS virus and other viruses that were uh, breaking out during that time, and they've been working diligently on the vaccine and on this virus to break the code, if you will, and have successfully filed this patent with the United States government. 
They've been working on the coronavirus, they said, for the past 15 years and have developed a method of reconstructing and reconstituting the RBM feature of the spike protein in SARS, in the COVID, and subsequently now in this COVID virus, according to the university uh, statement. In this article, Israel Vaccine Development for Coronavirus, a number of Israeli scientific teams are currently working to develop a vaccine for COVID-19. Earlier this month, and this is as of April, the Israeli Institute for Biological Research reported a significant progress toward a vaccine. A source familiar with the Institute's activity told uh, Reuters, the news agency, that other media outlets that tr- and other media outlets that trials were already underway on rodents without specifying which type. The Miguel Research Institute in the northern part of Israel have been working on a vaccine for COVID-19 in early March, and the scientists have said that they have successfully developed a new vaccine for a deadly virus affecting poultry and are now working to adapt the vaccine for humans. So we should pray for those that are looking for this vaccine and are doing the research, and I find it extremely interesting that it is the nation of Israel, once again, who are the Uh, by far the greatest holders of Nobel Peace Prizes, now we find that uh, the vaccine and the scientific research coming out of Israel now to be able to bless the world and bless the nations. Well, all of this is certainly playing into, as we read some of these articles of the Nazi-like activity in Kansas City and the uh, squelching of religious services here in the States and the protests that you've been seeing around the country that have been demanding that the opening and reopening of America businesses and churches for that matter uh, should take place. And I will tell you once again, as we've shared with you over the past few weeks, that uh, all that the government and scientists can do is look at the data, look at the research, look at the statistics and the science behind all that's taking place, share with us the numbers as you see every night continuing by the media to invoke fear into a society by watching the numbers and the death toll take place, just like they did during World War II, this fear-mongering and pushing fear is all that they are able to do. It is in direct contrast to the church's position that we walk by faith, not by sight. I want to share with you for just a few moments left in this program here on Prophecy Files about the seduction of the spirit of Antichrist from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Bible says that there would be a great or a a great falling away from faith and trust in God. Consider this passage of scripture from 2 Thessalonians. We've been here now in the past few weeks. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day or what you're talking about, Christ's return, shall not come except there come a falling away first. I'm finding that many Christians, many believers today, even uh, those that are believing and saying that they have great faith in God are struggling today with the the fear that is taking hold of our society and our world and being able to say, I'm going to step out in faith in the face of this pandemic. There is certainly a war that is going on in the souls of many people because they have traded their faith in God for self-reliance. And the falling away that the scripture speaks of is creeping into our society and into the church. This is an hour, and right here at Pace Assembly, we have decided as the leaders of this church have gathered together to discuss uh, the reopening and taking all the precautions that we need to do, but we have come to a point of the crisis of our faith. And pastors and leaders are making decisions when it's right for them to open up. No one should Uh, look down on someone because they may not step out right away, but I believe we're at the crucible. I believe we're at the threshold of the necessity of churches taking the lead in America and around the world, for that matter, to step out in faith and say that we believe and trust God in the face of this pandemic and with the very spirit of Antichrist that is creeping in on our society and inside of the church. The true followers of Jesus cannot be double-minded about this. This is the core of what this crisis is really all about. Will I trust God? Will I have faith in God in this very critical hour? I remind you 
that believing in God and believing that God exists and trusting in God are two different things. Many are going back and forth on this issue of fear and faith, and I understand the element of fear is very strong right now, but we must be a people of God that are putting our complete trust in God and in Christ and Him crucified. The cross is a double cure, salvation and our healing. And that's the reason why we must know the difference between believing in God, believing he exists, and actually trusting in God. Something happens whenever the terrorist attack took place in 2001 in America that took the lives of thousands. Back in that particular time, even Congress rushed to the steps to begin to sing God Bless America. Prayer meetings were held in massive stadiums as people gathered together. Now, Here we are with the collapsing potentially of Wall Street and this global pandemic, and suddenly it's back to trusting in what man can do and what science can do and what the uh, uh, individuals that are bringing statistics and technology can do instead of trusting in God. Now, this is partly because, listen carefully, this is the seduction of the spirit of Antichrist working right now. This is partly because when people could have gone to church and could have prayed and could have believed to be able to strengthen their faith in God for the times that would come and now we're in, they allowed other things to take first place. That is the seduction of the very spirit of Antichrist. Now listen, this is a crisis of faith that we're in right now. This is an attack without a doubt. And I'm not talking about just the virus. I'm talking about the spirit that is surrounding it that's causing fear uh, to ramp up like we never have seen before in our lifetime. This is the attack of the spirit of Antichrist that Paul said was already at work, even in his time, already at work in the world, trying to persuade believers that it's okay to be a Christian to a point, but when it really gets tough, trust in self. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how Christians get seduced by the spirit of Antichrist. So there are some identifiers I want to share with you quickly that you can see as the spirit of Antichrist is overcoming in many places in our world to the degree that governors are signing uh, guidelines and strict rules to list out those that would gather too close together, including in churches. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 that they receive not the love of the truth. The spirit of Antichrist moves in when God's truth is no longer loved or appropriated. And the Bible says the results of that in verse 12 of that same chapter is that all might be damned who believe not in truth. They didn't love the truth. Now, I want you to look very carefully with me in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5 verses 1 through 3 says this, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and how, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it, God says. And though they say, the Lord liveth, we believe him. Surely they swear it falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them. Listen now but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock, and they have refused to return. Listen carefully. Samaritan's Purse came into New York City to set up their tents, the doctors and the nurses and the volunteers there to be able to help people in the middle of this crisis in the very epicenter in the United States in New York City. Now, The LGBT uh, community has said, according to the article, that we no longer want this bigoted organization of Samaritan's Purse to be in the city. Even city councilmen saying, now that we've gotten past the crisis, we don't need them anymore. Basically, they're saying, now that we have achieved what we need to, we don't need your help, you Christian bigots. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the spirit of Antichrist at work right now. This passage of scripture from Jeremiah 5 is about Israel, God's people. And God is saying to them, he's saying, go find me just one person who has the heart for the truth, any one of them, and I will pardon them. But you won't find one, Jeremiah, God says. These people say that they love me, 
but they don't receive my correction. They don't grieve when I reprove them, God says to Jeremiah. They no longer tremble at my words. So follow this. I want to give you three signs of the seduction of the spirit of Antichrist that are indicators of a falling away, as Paul prophesied in 2 Thessalonians, of what's happening right now in our world. Here's some indicators. The first seductive sign of the spirit of Antichrist is the loss of love for the truth when you forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, I realize it's a very challenging time, and many people that may be more susceptible than others are finding online services or drive-in services to be better for their health, and I completely understand that. But my friends, I've had people uh, that have decided even now, and pastors are seeing it, that, you know what, Uh, we may not need to get back together again, or for fear, they're not planning on even showing up again. They'll just do their thing on Sunday as if it's in any other day or any of the services that show up. This is the spirit of Antichrist. If there is a lack of desire to go back to church, if there is not a longing, a love for God and his word, then the passage of scripture from Hebrews 10 and 25, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, is fulfilling in our time. Do you look forward to being in God's house with God's people? Or does the preaching and the worship seem boring and no longer matters to you? It's no longer important. If that's the case, then you're being seduced by the Antichrist, the very spirit of Antichrist, I should say. God is forever right now shouting from heaven that the closer you get to my coming, the more the perilous times are happening, the more important it is for you to be able to assemble yourself together. Here's seduction number two. The seduction of the loss of love for truth is when the message causes you to think of someone else's sin rather than your own. When you hear prophetic sermons and messages preached, when you hear a reproof coming from the word of God, from your pastor, from the evangelist or the prophet, do you think of 12 other people that need this more than you do? Or do you say something in your heart like, boy, I'm glad he's not talking about me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's important for us in the time we're living to pay close attention to the word of God and love the word of God no matter who is preaching it. If it's the gospel and the spirit of the Lord is dealing with my heart, he is searching me right then to find out if there is any kind of loss of love and and a drifting or a falling away. The Bible uses the term falling away, but the other word that is used there to describe it is a departure. Now, departure, as we know it in an airplane, uh, for, for instance, is a slow process that takes place from people standing in the terminal to get on board the plane, to backing it out, to riding out to the runway, and then the taking off. It is not something that's so sudden. It's a subtle drifting, a seduction of the spirit of Antichrist. Here's the third seduction that I would submit to you. The third seduction is when the word of God, when it's preached, when the message is brought, it literally strikes anger in the heart of an individual rather than humbling us before God. Hear what the word says in Proverbs 15 and 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. What a strong word from Proverbs. If you hear the word of God, a reproving sermon, it's time to apply it. Lord, search me with that word right there. I, I, I may not even realize what's inside of my own heart, as the scripture says. So let that word come into my life. And if there's any area in my life, let me humble myself and say, God, uh, do that work inside of me. Don't respond like the spirit of Antichrist would do inside of your heart and say, that word is is too hard. That preacher is too angry. Let me submit to you this, that any preacher who is a passionate, godly shepherd right now might even seem like the message is very strong, hard, and some even might call it angry, but he's not angry with you. He's angry with what the enemy is doing, Satan is doing in our land, the spirit of Antichrist is doing in the land, and that passion that you see from your pastor, and you should see it. In fact, I recall reading 
when Abraham Lincoln said uh, that I want my preacher to preach like he's fighting bees when he's preaching. In other words, he was saying, I want a passionate pastor who believes in himself enough to put his whole heart into this. And I can assure you that it's not just about preaching or gathering a crowd. We're living in a time right now, my friend, when it is life and death for eternity. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 once again. It speaks of the spirit of Antichrist where the Bible says, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's the key in verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that in verse number 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But look at what Paul said to close out that chapter in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord, because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through the belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 15. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we pass on to you, whether by word or of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. My friends, there is hope because I can tell you that in the midst of a falling away that I'm seeing right now in the seduction of the spirit of Antichrist in our world, there is also a great harvest that is taking place. There is the hope of the fact that The last day harvest is being gathered together and Jesus Christ, without a doubt, is ready to return to catch away his bride. I submit to you, my friends, in the middle of all of this pandemic and in the middle of overreaching uh, evidence of the spirit of Antichrist in our world, there is the spirit of the Christ who is lifting truth in this hour. I would encourage you today, my friends, to stay close to God in the word and in prayer and in the fellowship and assembly of reopening of churches around this world. And make sure that your heart is in love with the truth of God's word in this very critical hour. We encourage you and pray for you today to stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, because I believe that Jesus Christ is about to return. I wanna thank you for joining us for Prophecy Files today. And I pray that it's been an encouragement to your heart and to your life. Share it out right now and let it be a blessing. Till the next time, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.